Welcome back. Now, how much work has been done as part of efforts to amend the 1999 Constitution? Well, I put that question to the Executive Director of Policy and Legal Advocacy Center, Clement Mwako, who has contributed to efforts to amend the Constitution since the 6th National Assembly. If you recollect, uh, the 7th National Assembly did pass amendments to the Constitution. It went to the former president who vetoed it, and now uh, the issue is what to do with the fourth alteration bill, which the former president had vetoed. Uh, there are suggestions what to do. One is simply focus on that fourth alteration bill, review it by the committee, and uh, put it through the passage process. Uh, because a lot has happened with public hearings, uh, consultation with stakeholders, uh, consultation with citizens, until that bill was passed. And I think that at this stage, uh, the, the National Assembly should look at what to do. There are very novel provisions in the fourth alteration bill. But, but do you get the feeling, you, you've also played a role, you've at least taken part in the, uh, I take it, the two retreats. Uh, do you get that feeling that that's how it's going to go with the Eighth Assembly? Well, it's unclear. This would be my suggestion. But again, it, it's a new membership. Uh, most of the members of the committee are quite new. Uh, the good thing is that in the Senate you have the same chairman, uh, Senator K. Kweramado, who is very experienced in uh, constitutional issues and who I'm sure would be able to give leadership to, that would lead to the passage of this. Uh, but again, there are members who are not necessarily uh, members of the committee in the Seventh Assembly, both in the House and in the Senate. They might have their own perspectives, but I, I guess... Uh, uh, they would be guided by the wisdom of those that have been uh, in the committee in the past assembly. But your own advice would be to save time and to utilize most of the effort that was put in the fourth alteration. They should just move on with it. Well, I think it was quite um, sad for a lot of us who worked in the fourth alteration bill to see it not passed. But having gone through a legislative process, my sense is that it would be advisable that the committee uh, in both houses, the committees take this one bill and move forward with it, having gone through the legislative process. Of course, there might be some new issues that might have come up. And I think that one of the key issues uh, for business people is the Land Use Act. And there are provisions in the Land Use Act, not to respect to the management of land, but with respect to the business aspects where you can use land and instruments related to it for mortgage, for financing, and so on. I think that if you add something as urgent as that into the fourth alteration, yes, uh, you should really proceed to achieve a passage. Now, some had raised the observation that possibly what could have been a problem was the wholesale approach given to the alteration, whereby if the president had a problem with one part of it, it became a problem signing the whole document. I don't know what your take on whether that could still hinder some of the issues. When the, when the former president raised the issue on the other alteration, he didn't raise the issue on everything. He raised the issue on some parts of it, but that still hindered the whole effort. I don't see that's a problem because the both houses voted clause by clause and they took the votes per clause. So if you had a clause, for instance, that said, and this was in the Act, that said that the uh, provision of free maternal uh, health or primary health uh, shall now be a fundamental right for every citizen, uh, members voted for it. And you counted the numbers that they voted for fifth to have that pass as a fundamental right. The provisions related to separation of the office of attorney general from office of a minister of justice, it was voted on and you got two thirds of votes supporting each clause that was proposed for amendment. So if the president has uh, an exception to make to any of it, then he would make an exception to it and it would stand on its own as having been voted for separately. Okay, now from the retreat, the Senate retreat in particular, um, there were some issues that came up. One that has caught the 
public's attention has to do with the issue of uh, immunity for presiding officers. I, I don't know if you've also been following on that point. Yes, uh, that's a, a controversy for the National Assembly members. Uh, if you take the view of the ordinary Nigerian and the views of a lot of us in civil society, uh, the view is that even the immunity that exists today should be removed. Immunity we we believe that immunity for the president, immunity for the governors and their deputies should be removed. If somebody as president of Nigeria or as governor of Nigeria commits a crime and should be prosecuted, they should be prosecuted. The, 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 the position they're putting forward is that, like is happening now, it, it may affect if the leadership and as I'm sure you are, you are aware, that's the thinking that made the immunity for the president and the governors also be in place, that they can concentrate on providing governance and leadership and not be distracted, which some will say is happening in the National Assembly right now. You don't think that's enough ground to... Well, I, I think that, one, there are, there are, there are challenges here. The, if there are issues that are internal to whether it is the House of Representatives or the Senate, yes they should have their mechanism for resolving it. Okay. For instance, the issue related to the standing rules that are in contention at this time. I think that it is a failure of the system that within the Senate, they have not been able to resolve it. And I think that we need to be careful that the executive is not undermining the independence of the legislature on the excuse that they are prosecuting officers of the Senate for uh, what they see as a crime. I think that the internal mechanisms of the National Assembly, of the Senate, of the House of Representatives should kick in. And if it is found that anybody in the Senate or in the House has forged rules or anything, it should be possible that the internal mechanisms of the legislature should be able to address this. Okay, I'd like to go to another issue now that um you, I think it came up in the last alteration, the fourth alteration, that has to do with um, not making it mandatory for the president to have to um, sign off the amendments to the constitution before it comes, it becomes law. If it's passed through all the processes and satisfied those key parts of the constitution. What's your take on that? My take on it is that the spirit of the constitution really does not allow for presidential assent or veto to amendments of the Constitution. Okay. It is true that when the, a law is passed, the president assents to it. But alterations to the Constitution are not ordinary laws. They are the grand norm of a country and they go through a process and that's why in section 9 of the Constitution and indeed section 8 even, which affects alteration of the Constitution, it provides for a mechanism and process that takes it right through various processes of legislation right to the states where the state houses of assembly have to vote upon it by a simple majority in, in the states and by two thirds of states voting to support a proposal to amend. Okay. Uh, another issue that uh, I think the National Assembly, well, from the House of Representatives, has been the issue of the a report of the 2014 National Conference and they came out and said they're going to adopt it and um, uh, use it as part of their own considerations. What's your take on that? I think that the uh, National Constitutional Conference uh, had quite a lot of prominent accomplished Nigerians in it. The deliberations looking at it were really very well thought through uh, but of course what the deliberations and what that report will do would be to feed into what the National Assembly has. And the National Assembly needs to review it, needs to take the most important aspects of it, given that you have more than 400 Nigerians sit down, very accomplished Nigerians come up with these resolutions and suggestions. I think that it's a document that should be taken seriously, that National Assembly needs to sift the best out of it and introduce it as a component of uh, the amendments to the Constitution. But there are two elements to this. One is the standing document, the pending document, the fourth alteration bill. I think National Assembly needs to take this and conclude it. And then I think that new issues as are disclosed in the uh, CONFAB report 
should be taken seriously by the National Assembly, reviewed and taken forward. Thank you.